that is right. I have been using Microsoft Excel for the last 15 years and I don't use hundreds of the functions that are available in it. Based on my recent experiences of doing a lot of Excel data analysis, here are the 10 functions that you should really focus on if you want to get good with Excel. Let's go. Here is the sample data that we will use to understand the top 10 Excel functions. There is about 100 rows of awesome chocolate sales information here. We know the salesperson, country, product, date, and amount and boxes shipped. The number one function in my top 10 list is the SUMIFS function. It is a function that we can use to sum up values that meet various criteria. For example, if I want to add up all the amounts that are corresponding to UK, I can have country as an input cell and then total amount can be calculated with SUMIFS like this. SUMIFS and then you will select the column where the amount is. So column J and criteria column number one, which would be country. So column G and the criteria as UK here. We can see the answer as 94,983. We can use some ifs to add up multiple criteria as well. So instead of just adding up everything in UK, we can ask a question like how much is the total amount in UK for Van Tuxwell? So we can set up the formula like this. So criteria one would be country as UK and then criteria two would be on the salesperson column as WAN. And we will get that answer as $6,727. Many times when we analyze the data, these kind of questions are quite common. My next function is the XLOOKUP function. You need Excel 365 or Excel on the web to be able to use XLOOKUP as well as some of these other functions. So just keep that in mind when you are learning about these and apply them on the relevant versions of Excel. So for example, I want to know what is the first value for OB Sorrel. We can set up the input cell like this and then get the amount for them using XLOOKUP, LOOKUP OB and then you specify the LOOKUP array, return array. LOOKUP array is where the names are, so this salesperson column and return array is the column from which you want the answer, so amount column. And when you press enter on this function, you will get the first value of OB Sorrel. So in this case, it will be this 13,685 as the answer. You might think, wait a second, there are multiple values for OB Sorrel. For example, further down on my list, I have another OB Sorrel item here, and then there might be even more. So what if you want to get all of such items? This is where my third function comes in, the filter function. So we will have an input criteria like person and I want to see all the amounts where OB Sorrel is the salesperson. So we can use the filter like this, filter and then specify the data that you want to filter. In this case, I want to see all the amounts. So I'll just select the amount column and then include is the criteria. So criteria should be salesperson column. So column F is equal to that value D4. When you close the bracket here, you will see all the items where OB Sorrel is the salesperson. Filter can do a lot more magic than what I'm demonstrating here, but I have got other special videos on the channel that talk more about filter specifically. Check that video out if you want to learn about filter. Let's say you don't want to add up any values or see the values, but you just want to know how many times a particular thing happened. For example, you may want to know how many times we have shipped to UK in the month of January 2022. This is where the COUNTIFS function is helpful. Let's just set up country as UK, month as Jan 2022. Even though we think of the month as January 2022, technically Excel would consider this as a single date in the month of January 2022. So it points the date as 1st of Jan 2022. This is an important thing to keep in mind when you're developing the functions. So we can calculate the number of shipments using the COUNTIFS function like this. COUNTIFS and then criteria one needs to be country as UK and criteria two needs to be the date needs to be in the month of January. Now because any date in the Jan needs to be counted, we will need to set up two criteria: one for the starting point of the month, one for the end point of the month. So the dates are in column I. First criteria is on or after, so this is where greater than or equal to comes in, ampersand D5. Because D5 is kind of a value and these are 
comparison operators that are in double quotes we will use the ampersand to combine these two we'll need to do for the end point as well because we don't want to count anything that happened in february we just want to stop at the end of jan so again we will use the same column i but this time the end point needs to be less than and and we want to know the next month's date so here we can use a function like e date start date comma one and when you close everything and run this you will see that in the month of jan 2022 for the country uk we have made five shipments you can get a little bit more creative with these kind of functions and combine any kind of checks and other formulas and create some really powerful data analysis in excel my next function is the index function we can use index to access a specific element in a range or a list of values so let's use index to get the 12th item in this salesperson column and we can use index like this index of and then select a column or a range of values so in this case all the values in f and then specify the row number which is here and you will get the 12th item which is bar phony so here you can see that that is the 12th item you can also use index on a two-dimensional range so I can ask the question index of all of this data what is in row number 12 column number 3 so here row number 12 is this column number 3 is orange choco so we'll get that answer my next function is the like function excel doesn't really have a like function but youtube does so give this video a like if you're enjoying this video while you are there consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this my next function is the edate function we have already covered this so edate function can be used to calculate a future or a past date based on number of months so let's just say i have a project start date here as 7th of jan 2022 and i want to know what would be the date six months from that point we can use e date for that e date of that date comma six and then i'll get a future date value by default excel formats dates as numbers so we see the numeric representation of this but if you press the shortcut Control shift 3 you can see that that date is 7th of july 2022 we can also use e date to go back in time so e date of this minus 24 will tell you what the date is two years ago 7th of Jan 20. My next function is the text join function. We can use text join to combine a bunch of text values and add a specific delimiter. So let's just say I want to take some data from here, these five, six names, and I want to just print everything together in one cell. We can use text join like this text join delimiter. Let's just say that is comma and space ignore empty for now you can just leave that out and then select the values this will give you one big text that has all these values combined we can use the text join in a creative way to do various fun things let's just say i want to see all the products that ob sorrel is selling so we'll set up person as ob sorrel Earlier I talked about filter function, so I can see all the products that OB is selling by saying filter products where person is equal to OB. So these are the products that they're selling. I don't want to see them in individual cells. I want to see everything together in one cell. So this is where the text join comes in. I can send the output of filter to text join with a comma space delimiter and then we'll get that answer there. While this is good, it opens another problem, which is my 99 dark and pure appears twice in this list. And this is where our next formula comes in, the unique function. Unique function can remove any repeated values in your data. For example, if I just want to see all the unique salespeople, all the individuals, I can say unique of, and then I'll see all the individuals. So even though we have 100 records, these are the only people that we are really operating. Now let's apply the unique concept here. So instead of just saying text join of filter, we'll first send the result of filter to unique and then text join it. What this will do is it will remove that extra 99% dark and pure so that only one item per product will appear here. Going back to the results of unique, while this is a good listing, you may want to see this in the alphabetical order. 
and this is where my ninth function comes in the sort function so instead of just printing the values as they are you can also sort them so sort of the data and then it will sort that you don't have to pass another function's results to the sort you can also sort the data directly that is on the spreadsheet so for example i can take the amount column and then i can sort it so we can go to a new spreadsheet here and then here i'm gonna say sort go back and get all these amounts now these amounts are sorted in the ascending order so the lowest amount we have is 49 all the way up to 19,453. if you want to see this in the descending order you can also use the additional operator in the sort we can ignore the index and the sort order needs to be minus one and that will basically show the values in the descending order so these are the nine important functions in excel you might think okay what about the tenth one the tenth one is the if error function let us say you have a couple of values here 23 and 0 and you want to know what would be the division of this if you go here directly 23 by 0 you will get a div by 0 error instead of that we can use the if error function like this if error of that and then we can't divide by 0 and that's the message that will come up but the moment we can actually fix this problem so for example if this becomes 12 then we'll get the correct answer here so this is where if error is super helpful when you're building large spreadsheets or doing big analysis and you don't want to have errors show up on the output screens while learning functions is a good way to improve your excel skills you may also want to understand some of the other features that are available in excel to solve data problems I suggest looking at either Power Query or Pivot Tables. Check out the videos that show up on the screen for both of these topics and I catch you there. Bye!